If I tell you I love you, I mean it. Why I got killed, I seen it. I was right there, still can't believe it. Shit turned me to a demon. Police asked me, you ain't seen none. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, fam. We're back. Y'all ain't gonna believe today's stories, man. I laugh just thinking about some of this, even though it's not funny. Before I do these stories, a lot of time I replay things through my head. I'll go back and have like a timeline of my life, where I was at, where I was locked up at, or what I was doing in the streets, who I was around, yada, yada, yada. If anybody trying to do something like this, write down a timeline of your life. It'll help you pinpoint certain occasions, situations, things of that nature. Aside from that, I have a really good memory. Like, I can tell you what I ate last week. Um, I have a great memory. I can tell you who my kindergarten teacher was, first grade, second grade, on and on. But with today's video, man, I got to think back on, there's a lot of things that cause problems while locked up. Now, early on, when I first was a little knucklehead and I was that little young dumb dude that just had to get locked up, I'm that guy, you know what I mean? I just can't stay out of lockup. A lot of guys are like that. I was that guy. We fought for different reasons. It was respect it was over the drugs and the pack being brought in and not liking somebody somebody can look at you the wrong way or you find out they're talking bad about you to this person and then you would you and that person would get into it. the world changes i've seen an integration of something that at one time was very taboo that was something that was very standoffish people didn't talk about you didn't see a lot and that was the homosexuality aspect of men being locked up that wasn't a thing back in the day it wasn't but then as it became more accepted in society and people were like okay this is just who this person is these guys became more comfortable when they come into the jails with being themselves they weren't always like that i know of a lot of guys that i suspected but you're like all right you won't come out and say it so you didn't know when dudes did start coming out and saying it and became more accepted you started to find out the guys that actually like the boys so you got the ones that act like boys and the ones that like the boys and then there's going to cause conflict there's going to be a lot of problems behind that that wasn't something i used to see in the jail it was something very common in prison it has been for a long time but then back in the thousands the early thousands it wasn't a secret no more everybody had coming out the closet everybody came out the closet so it caused a lot of beef within the jails, a lot of beef amongst the inmate population. Dudes weren't gonna stand for being disrespected by a gay guy because they felt like if he was gay, that they could automatically beat him, which isn't always the case. Oh, that's a bad day when you see that dude get beat up. And then guys would really fight behind these boys. Like they were fighting over a chick in the streets. Like they had a dime piece lined up and they pulled up at the house and somebody else was there. Like what is you doing here? That's how it became in the jail. And that's what we're doing today. Watching these dudes get to the get down behind these boys. Some of the craziest situations I saw where it always ends bad and it went down over a boy. Do you imagine running your time up and staying in prison or jail longer behind somebody that's just gonna move on tomorrow? And then, not only that, you come out the closet for this person, and that person moves forward, and now you're just gay for the stay, as they say. That's what we're doing today, man. Some of the craziest fights I've seen behind the boys when uh, love goes wrong. <laughs> man, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So, let's relive it. You know I got to give you all the quick weekly update on what's going on in life. So, we're back from the vacay blessed a lot of people just think about themselves when it comes to a vacation for me it's time for me to bond with my children for me to get closer to them being the man of the house your responsibility is the house i'm not you know i have my beliefs and i believe that the man should take care of the woman the man should protect his family i was told once if you won't fight for it you don't deserve to have it I take great care of my family and anybody that's in my circle. But with being at work all the time, you're never there. I looked at my son right before my vacation and I was like, stop. And he was like, what? And I was like, stop growing, man. Like, it's breaking my heart to watch him 
It's great to watch him grow up, but it's breaking my heart that he's not my little boy no more. He turns five Thursday. Shout out to Noah, man. Here he is running around the house, got his PlayStation controller in his hands. Hey, Daddy, come here and help me with this. And I just told him, stop. Put the controller down, man. Just be little. Why? I said, because this is not going to last long. You're not going to still run up and jump in my arms. I'm not going to be able to hold you in my arms and put your head on my shoulder and told you to your room at night and tuck you in. Like, breaks my heart to know that, damn, that's, there's a love that comes with having a child that's small. That, it's, it's uncomparable. There's nothing else in this world that feels like the love you get from somebody that small. So with my time off, I spent as much time with the family as possible. Everything I did revolved around the family. Now, my wife had made a comment a while back saying me and her should go somewhere without the kids because, you know, if you got a, you know, a wife and you got kids, the kids take up a big part of your relationship. It's not really about you and your wife anymore. It's more about the kids and y'all's intimate time and y'all's time together gets cut in half because of the kids but I said no I'm like no no whatever I'm going to do in life my children are going to be there to experience that is what we signed up for when we had kids so on my vacay my time was spent with my kids man we made some amazing memories things I'll never forget and like I said I'm blessed to be able to do that we're all back at Work now, back on the grind. You know what it's grind time. Get that money. Y'all know, I'm not one of them guys that just gets the YouTube check and sits at home trying to figure out what video to make next or else he's going to be broke. I know everything that's good must come to an end. Like Tom Cruise is a great actor one time. When's the last time you've seen a Tom Cruise movie? Look at Nicolas Cage, one of the highest paid actors at one point. Now he's like the equivalent, and no disrespect to old Nick, now he's like the equivalent of Steven Seagal. Puts out like three or four movies a year and a lot of them don't get seen. Everything that's good comes to an end at one point. That's why I'm transitioning. Transition. That's a great word for what's going on. I told my wife the other day. I said, I'm really getting tired of this. She's like, what? I'm like, this, this everyday work thing, man. I'm missing out on everything that's going on here. But I know that I have to do it. I know that the day I quit working will be the day everything goes downhill. I don't have to figure out how to take care of of my tribe. And I'll never let that day come. So as long as these hands work and these feet work, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get up every morning and I'm gonna put on for my family. I'm gonna make sure that they're okay and that they have everything they need. And if I get a vacation, then great, I've been blessed. And if I don't get one, so be it. But at the end of the day, they're gonna be good and I'm always gonna be good. Let's get into today's video. I guess you could say I'm now, damn, I'm an old head. I went from being nephew, now if I was to go back to prison, they'd be like, I'd either be uncle or old school, man. I was born in 1980, 42 years old. Like I said, blessed. The 80s was a different time. I remember in 88, we had these two lesbian chicks that lived next door. One was like the female, one had the typical 80s butch spike haircut. I don't remember that everybody in the neighborhood gossiped about the gay couple. They, you would see them going in with their groceries and it was like very weird to all of us because it was a different day and time. Moving forward in school, throughout my teenage years, we had guys that we would brag on, bro, you gay. Man, I'm not gay. And then later on in life, you run into that person again and that's, that's he's no longer he, he's a she. So we were writing our assumptions. Moving out throughout life, this is something that society just said, okay, it is what it is. Gay marriage is legal in most states. It is what it is. I've always told you, be yourself. Huh? I have no problem with anybody that is just being themselves. If that's who you are, kudos to you. man. It takes a lot of courage to stand up in front of the world and say, this is who I am. So I have no issue with what anybody else decides to do. It's your life. Live it however you want to. I've seen several occasions back in the 90s. Several. A handful. Not a lot. But enough to talk about to open this video up of gay men locked up in the jails. Earlier than that, in the detention center, it was unheard of. And my neighborhoods and stuff like that, except for like, you know, the, the lesbian couple, it was unheard of. 
Like, if you've seen a gay couple in public, everybody stared, you know? Like, you know what I'm talking about? You cut your eyes, but you don't really look. You're looking, but you're not looking. Like, you try to make it look like you're not looking, but you're looking. That type of thing. Now, in Philly, the you know, Philly boys are real quick to be opinionated. They're going to tell you how they feel. Man, if you don't get your gay from over here, man, like, there's no cut card in Philly. There's no holding your tongue. Dudes are straightforward out there on how they feel. And being locked up, you see a lot more of it because, I mean, you're just not with society's greatest. You're with all the guys that can't get right, all the guys that commit crimes, all the guys that are locked up and been through the same process as you. I've seen a couple different situations of men and the boys. The first time being in 99, and that actually wasn't the first time, but this was the first year that I was subjected to this type of stuff. I've seen a couple of different situations take place in there behind these boys. This one in particular involves an older dude, old bald dude that had a lazy eye. Remember how Biggie's eye looked? Like it was just kind of, sometimes it was normal, and then sometimes it was just kind of like, damn, his eyes messed up. Same thing with this dude, old head, bald head, light skin, had done a bunch of penitentiary bids, but you can call him old school because I do not remember the dude's name. I don't think nobody really knew his name. He stayed to himself. But he had that look of danger. He lived on the bottom tier, and the way the pile was set up, you come in and you got an eating area up top, there's the officer's desk, then you go down some stairs, and that opens up to the bottom sections of cells. It's like a horseshoe. Then you got a section of stairs, you go up top, and then you got the top tier where, you know, if you ain't in your cell, you're not really supposed to be congregating up there. This dude lived in the first cell at the very bottom, on the bottom floor, and he really didn't talk to anybody, but dudes whispered about it. Man, dudes don't want no, you know, no wreck with him. Don't go over there causing no problems to old head. Yeah, it's, he's headed back to the prison for like the fifth time. This man has got to be in his mid-50s, late 50s. He is a convict. He is way different from everybody else in here. These dudes in here are on some, still got that street mentality. He's already in bid mode. He's already in, accepted the fact that he is going back to prison for a long time. So he's in full convict mode. He ain't taking no disrespect he's not chit-chatting making small talk making friends he stays to himself he's usually in a cell he don't come out there and sit in the day room and watch tv he don't got a group of guys he hangs out with he's got a hall job where he leaves every day that's usually who they would give the jobs to is the more quiet guys the guys that they knew i wouldn't have no problems out of this guy he stays out the way give him the job he would leave out each day and go mop the hallways and then he would come back but when you did see him it would be We'd be sitting down in the day room, watch TV, and you hear that front door, sh clack clack. It would pop. That's what we call it. The door pops. It makes a pop noise when they open it. And everybody, I don't care who you are, what you're doing, what's going on, you become accustomed to sounds. And when you hear that noise, you're going to immediately look up there. That's either going to be a new guy, a guy that lives in there, return of somewhere, or some guards coming in. And you need to constantly know who's coming through that door because if it's guards, and your cell ain't right, or you got something sitting out you shouldn't, or they're coming in, putting gloves on to shake down. You need to hurry and get over to your cell real quick and make sure everything's straight. Nothing you can get jammed up on, so you pay attention to that door. We would always see this dude. Every morning you'd hear the door pop, and you look up and you see the old head, a tall, light-skinned dude, bald head, lazy eye, shirt tucked in, making his way up out of there to go clean the hallways. Later that evening, after he's done his rounds, he's been all over the institution now, everywhere. There's not really many places this guy couldn't go. He was trusted. He stayed to himself and didn't talk a lot. Later that evening, you hear that door pop, bing, and you look over, everybody, heads turn, and you see him coming back in. He go, get him some hot water, make his coffee, make him a little something to eat, go in a cell and stay to himself. A lot of times he would just shut the door and his cellmate would stay out there, and then they eventually took his cellmate out and gave him single cell status, which is almost unheard of. Single cell means you have a cell by yourself. You don't have to have no man in there farting, no man pooping in there with you, trying to talk to you. They were like, ah, right, yeah, you're cool. We're just going to give you that cell. Cell one is yours. You worry about nobody else. We're all sitting there one day, and we hear the door pop, pop. Like clockwork, heads turn. We look. There's new guys coming in. Nothing normal. In jail, guys go home. Guys go off to prison. The environment constantly switches. Might be, you know, out of all the guys here this month, you fast forward 90 days, it might still be five of us that were there 90 days ago. Now these other guys are all new intakes or guys that have been transferred in from other parts. We see the news guys coming in. 
And it's almost like when somebody's openly gay, it does not take you long to realize that person's gay. You can see it a lot of times in the way they walk, in the way they position their shoulders, definitely in the way they talk, their mannerisms, things they do. They have a lot of female traits and tendencies. We see the new guys coming in and, all right, checking to see if there's anybody we know, anybody from the neighborhood, anybody we've done time with before, familiar faces, possibly somebody you're beefing with. You always want to keep a check on your surroundings. It's like three, four guys coming in. And one of them stands out, smaller black dude, small, skinny, frail black dude, looks petrified. Like he's never been in this type of world before. And as the guys are checking in with the officer and figuring out their bed assignments and what cells they're going to, you can see that just in the way this dude walks, it's done got quiet now, guys are trying to eavesdrop and hear what's going on. And as he's speaking to the officer, we're not located far from this desk where these little chairs we sit in are. As he's speaking to the officer, oh no, there's no denying it. He's got sugar in his tank, as they say. The man is clearly gay. He goes on, but they go, he goes into that. We have what was called a multi purpose room at the time. If they didn't have an open cell for you, a lot of times you would come in and you might know someone, they'd be like, hey, oh, put him up here with me. But if not, you would go into the multi purpose room. He goes into the multi-purpose room and he's not in there long. The other guys that are in there with him do not feel comfortable with him being in there. Guys aren't talking to him. It's like the unwritten rule of being locked up that you just do not make small talk. You don't go over there. And I know it sounds messed up. I felt bad for these guys at times because they were outcasted. Especially back then, it was really, really bad with them being outcasted. Nobody would talk to them. Nobody would conversate with them. Nobody's going to kick it with them. The only person that would talk with them would be if another gay guy showed up or somebody that liked the boys showed up. This dude's not, nobody's vibing with him. Nobody's talking to him in the multi-purpose room. He goes to the officer. A whole entire cell comes open on the top tier. She goes and talks to the shift commander, the watch commander, the white shirt, whatever you want to call him, the guy that oversees this unit and that, that section of the jail says, hey, i like to move him out of the multi-purpose room. Put him on the top tier in a cell by himself. He's clearly gay. Dudes ain't talking to him. He doesn't feel comfortable. He's not going to be comfortable in any cell we put him in. So we'll just move him to the top tier. And that's what they do. They move him from the multi-purpose room on the top tier down a ways and put him in a cell. So now you got two guys in here that are single cell. Old, skinny, tall, light-skinned, bald dude with the lazy eye that mop floors all day. And then you got the dude up here on the top tier that's openly gay that nobody talks to. Better part of a week has gone by now, and this dude would come out, and he would sit down, and he would read the Bible. It's the only thing he had. He would sit there, and he would read the Bible, and he would say stuff when people were about, how you doing? And nobody would acknowledge you. He would sit down, and everybody else would get up and move. It's crazy. That's the world we live in. He's sitting there one day by himself, up at the front, where we all... When you eat, you go up these steps, and there's these tables all set there. We would eat inside the pub, but they had a different section that would set out for our child feeding. The officer would allow him to sit up there by himself and read his Bible and write down scriptures and highlight stuff. He didn't bother nobody. The old dude is coming in one day, this convict dude I've talked about, and he's coming in from off of these floors, walks by the dude, goes down there to his cell, cell one, gets his cup, gets his coffee, goes up there, makes his coffee. Mind you now, this man doesn't talk to anybody. He doesn't bother anybody. As he's going back towards his cell, glances over at the boy and he does what none of us see him coming he goes and sits down with him don't know what he said don't know what the conversation consisted of we just all looked over and there he sits talking to the boy he's a convict remember now four or five penitentiary bids under his belt older man he's done lived that life done been behind the wall where this is very accepted He's looking at all us like, y'all got the game messed up. Ain't none of y'all been to prison yet, so y'all act like this is weird or something. But he's up there talking to this dude. They talk for a better part of 30, 45 minutes. We end up locking down, and then after we lock down, the gay guy comes out, goes and sits up there, and this old man comes up there, sits down with him, and commences to talking to him. It doesn't take very long, maybe within the next two, three days, we're sitting out there and we'll watch TV. We get up early on Saturdays and early certain mornings. They still show cartoons at this time. You know, cartoons have been done away with. 
We would get up and watch cartoons in the morning. Grown ass men watching cartoons. I guess that's a lot of us trying to re-get our childhood back. But I did it. I love cartoons to this day. Shout out to my cartoon watchers. We're out there watching cartoons one morning and we see the boy up there packing all the stuff up, rolling all his old belongings, which isn't a lot inside of his sheets and his blanket, ties in a knot, comes down the staircase and he goes over to sell wine. He's moving in with the old head. I guess the old head sold him. Now, you ain't got to be isolated. You ain't got to be up there by yourself. Maybe sell him. You shouldn't be treated like that. Stay with me. I see it for what it is. There's not many people that are going to befriend him, especially in an environment like that. Anytime somebody approaches you or comes up to you, 99.9999% of the time, they want something. So when him making conversation with this gay guy, time and time again, having him move from upstairs down to his cell, we all see it for what it is. I don't think this boy had ever been locked up before and knew that, you know, he ain't trying to just be your friend. He's trying to be your man. Didn't really affect any of us. The man didn't talk to none of us. Guys are whispering, saying things here and there. There've been a couple situations where dude they called, dude they called the little, you know, the gay guy out of his name, called him slurs and whatnot. But now he's up underneath the old head, which tells everybody else, there's things you can and can't do. When it comes to them boys, you disrespect the boy, he ain't who you really gotta worry about. Who you gotta worry about is his man. And his man don't care what none of y'all think. If he cared what y'all think, he wouldn't be openly doing this in front of everybody. So he's already open to criticism. He's already expecting somebody to pop off, eventually say something. And if he's put himself out like that, he's ready for it. Months go by now. You see this old man smile, laugh, joke, but he talks to nobody else, just the boy. The boy talks to nobody else. The boy will talk to the female officers and guards coming in, which is frowned upon. You don't do that. But the boys were, you know, that was a thing they used to do was kick in ha-ha and kiki with the guards and whatnot. Like clockwork, the old man would roll out every day, come back to work. The boy would mop the cell, clean the cell, keep the cell spick and span like it was their house. Everybody now knows this isn't the old man being nice. Him and the boy are in a full-blown relationship. Guys said, I didn't see it, but we had heard guys say, hey, I seen the man kiss the boy before he went to work this morning. Well, I seen the man kiss the boy when he came in this evening. They were standing in the cell and I seen him kiss him. The other dudes are like, oh, and, you know, there's a lot of whispering going on, but ain't nobody came out and went at this dude and said that, right? Dude is at work one day and the boy goes up there and he goes up and makes his hot water. and He's coming by and he says something to somebody. And this is a dude that just came in the pod maybe a day or two earlier, that didn't really know the boy, that didn't really know the boy's living conditions, didn't know much about old school that the boy lived with, and that this dude was a convict and was not with the play, you know, playing games and would get down to get down. And the boy walked by, and I don't know if he said, hey, how you doing? What's up? Or what he said to that dude. But he said something to him that caused the man to react in a way that was normal, but bad on his part. He starts snapping on the boy, disrespecting the boy. Calling the boy out, don't you fuck say nothing to me. I'm, like, he's really trying to show everybody else that I guess maybe he's homophobic, whatever it may be. He completely snaps out on the boy, threatens the boy, starts running his mouth. Meanwhile, the boy's got this cup of hot water. I'm looking, hoping, like, throw this shit in his face. I'm going to splash his ass for the one time. Show these people you ain't been to play with. You're going to have to put on at some point or they're going to keep trying you like this. The boy don't say nothing. He's walking off and this dude is still ah, da, 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 going in. He goes in the cell. He doesn't come out, sit out there and read his Bible. He goes in the cell and closes the door. Later that evening, slang, the door pops. We look up. Here comes old school. I know. I already know from doing time that when that man gets back and that boy tells him about this dude that just embarrassed him, just cursed at him and threatened him in front of everybody. That's the equivalent of somebody cursing at your wife, threatening your wife, the woman you love, and you're not doing nothing. If somebody threatens your wife, calls your wife names as a man, you are obligated to straighten that situation. Same thing goes for these men and these boys. Old head comes in, 
doesn't go to the hot pot. He goes to his cell. Usually he would come out or the boy would come out with a cup and go get his hot water and he'd making some coffee and they would get their evening popping. Old man goes to the cell and instead of coming out and going to get hot water, he comes and he's standing in the doorway and he's scanning the room. He's looking for the dude that the boy told him, threatened him, and the boy told him had been running his mouth. Dude standing up on the top tier, comes out of his cell, leans on the rail. Very common dude to lean on the rail, and then the guards are, hey, get off the top tier, no being on the top tier, no congregating. Bring it down to the day room or get off the top tier, go in your cell. Dude comes out, leans on the rail, and is looking around and doesn't even know that he's got this old head down there that's ready to full on go to war behind this boy and has every intention of doing something to him behind this boy. For all of us watching from the outside looking in, we're expecting that this old dude that don't speak to nobody but the boy is either going to scream on him or go up there and say something to him, but he doesn't. He just stands in his door staring at him. Standing in his door doing what we you never do. You don't ever just eyeball a man, make eye contact with him, lock in and stare. And if you do, you guys have a problem. He is standing there staring at this dude, and this dude is still not picked up on the fact that the guy in cell one is just staring at him, straight in his face, waiting for him to look at him. Officer makes her announcement, get off the top tier. He comes down, goes in the day room, sits there on the little section of these little chairs we got, and the TV hangs from the ceiling, and just goes about his business talking to other dudes that he knows from in the jail. Old head doesn't say nothing. Takes, shuts the door. They lock in for the remainder of the night. The next morning, old head, I don't know if he was stewing on it, plotting on it, waiting what he was going to do. But it didn't go down like we expected. I thought he was going to come out, punch the man, or run, run up in a cell. That is the most common thing you see. He does it. Him and the boy lock in that night. The boy comes out, makes them something to eat, brings it out. You don't see the old head no more. Following morning, the old head gets up, goes to work. He comes in that evening, goes to his cell, changes his clothes, and is standing in the doorway. Right before they lock down, I go get my hot water. My celly gets his hot water. We call it buck 90 because it's 190 degrees water. Throw that shit on somebody and change your life. And as I'm up there getting my hot water, I hear screaming. I hear yelling. And I hear just commotion. But it's a one-on-one -on -one commotion. And it's not anybody else making any noise. You know when it's an isolated incident. And I look around and I see everybody that's in the day room that's starting to lock down. And dudes in their cell, they're standing up at the top tier. And all you hear is yelling and screaming and the dude the second dude that lived in that cell had ran out the cell and was standing about five six cells down and all you can see is the shadows bouncing off the side of the wall from the way the cell is positioned you can't see in the cell but you can see the shadows moving on the wall of all this commotion and you hear screaming maybe 30 seconds passes the old man comes out the cell walks down the staircase blood all over the front of him blood on his arms blood all over the front of the you know the pants he had on and he goes ahead and locks in. By now, the officer has called the code, and all these other officers come running in. And the first thing they do is they run up there, and she ready, she's ready and told them, grab such and such out of cell one. He was the aggressor. Go check on the man in the top tier. They go up there. He's going to poke this boy full of holes. to stab this man up that disrespected that boy the day before. What he did was, and this is common, with these older dudes that have these jobs, they'll have a weapon. They'll sometimes keep one in the pod, and a lot of times they'll stash it where they work or at another location. And if they have some type of problem, they'll just wait till they can get to their weapon, then they'll bring the weapon back, and they'll resolve their issue. And that's what he did. Would he have just fought the dude? Yes. When he was making eye contact with the dude, the dude didn't pick up on it. We all picked up on it. We are watching. Dude didn't pick up on it. He waited the next morning, went to work, went to his Bama spot, got this piece of steel, this poker, this knife, came back from work and waited till right before we locked down. Walked up the staircase probably for the first time in God knows how long. Walked in that cell, I don't know if he said anything. I don't know if he said, hey, why'd you say this? Based off of what I'd seen with him in the past, I don't think he said a word. I think he just walked up in that cell and just, just started stabbing the man. The other dude sitting on the bunk that ain't got nothing to do with this, runs out the cell. What are you gonna do you're sitting in a Old school convict just comes in and just starts stabbing the dude that's in your cell. And you're, oh shit, you're gonna get up out of there. They ended up taking a man that got all stabbed up over to medical, taking old school and locking him up, getting him up out of there. Kept him in the hole the remainder of his bed, hit him with new charges. So he would have to go back to court for stabbing this man. Now he got that time. Plus, he was already going to prison. He didn't give a shit. Fifth time going back to prison, he's probably never coming home again. And then they took the boy in. 
put him in the hole as well because he was part of the investigation. He was part of what had taken place. And that would be the end of that. But that was one of the first bad situations I seen take place. There were so many things at a young age I didn't understand yet. Like I didn't understand why is he waiting to address this situation? I knew the situation had to be addressed. I knew it wasn't going to go unanswered. I knew him disrespecting that boy was going to lead to either the boy getting hurt, him getting hurt, or the older man getting hurt. And what it led to with him thinking shit was sweet and not keeping his eyes on that man at all times, what it led to was that man sneaking up there and poking holes all in his ass. And I guarantee you, him and that boy probably never seen each other again. Boy didn't have a whole lot of time to do. I think he was locked up on a Xanny charge, locked up for some Xanax. So he goes home in a couple months and you're headed off to prison. You've now got more time. But I'm going to tell you this, when it comes to them old school convicts, they don't care nothing about that. When it comes to poking holes in you and cutting you, watching you bleed and trying to take you up off this earth, it's not the first time they've done it. And it won't be the last. They're not the ones you want to play with. You go in there and disrespect that boy if you want to. And like I said, sometimes you got to worry about the boy. But most times, you better be worried about his man. Damn, that first video was, it went much longer than I expected. I got another story for y'all when I seen a boy knock somebody out one time that had got picked on and picked on and picked on and had warned dudes that I could fight with golden glove box. I knocked dudes did not heed warning. And he eventually knock one of these dudes out in front of everybody and all the dudes homeboys just stood there like deer in the headlights and did nothing but we'll save that story for another day i'm back at work i got to play catch up we got over a thousand i think right at a thousand square feet of flooring that's got to go in the day that's got to be picked up purchased and installed so i gotta get back on my grind man i gotta get back to the dollar love all y'all y'all know what it is man but anyways, these jails, the tech centers, these facilities, these prisons, they're all just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing, man. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do it. Salute.